Hey Muses, it's Melissa. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell while you're here. The purpose of this video is to help those who have a darker complexion who are also looking for a physical sunscreen. Recently, a subscriber commented on one of my previous skincare videos and she noticed that in my skincare video, I referenced a physical sunscreen and she wanted to know how it performed, whether or not it left a white cast. And she also was wondering whether or not it would work for oily skin types because she is of darker skin tone as well as has oily skin. So I replied to her questions, but then I suggested, you know what, I could do a video specific on this topic and basically show you how the sunscreen looks on my skin. I figured a visual reference would be more helpful in the long run. So here we are today. Physical sunscreens pose a little bit of a dilemma for those of us with a darker skin tone. And that is they sometimes, most of the time, leave behind a white and or purplish looking cast. And basically you end up looking like you are literally casket ready or you're Casper the friendly ghost. Either way, it really is not a good look, especially if you're someone who don't wear makeup on the regular or or you just don't wear makeup at all. Like I tend to just be bare faced most of the time. So it's not like I can wear foundation or makeup to kind of hide or cover up the cast. So I, I do like something that doesn't make me look ill. If going bare face is your thing, which is often the case for me, then the presence as well as the degree of the cast that's left behind by physical sunscreen matters a lot. So I'm going to be showing you four physical sunscreens that I own, all of which I've purchased. I'm going to be providing you guys with information about each sunscreen as well as my thoughts on each of them. Between applications, I will be wiping the sunscreen off with these facial wipes and then I'm going to reapply a moisturizer and I'm going to be using this one from Drunk Elephant and I'm doing that in order to have a consistent canvas my face to experiment with. Keep in mind I have combination skin. I do experience some areas that are dry and some areas that are oily but usually when my skin is under control it's more on the normal side but Overall, I have combination skin. Up first, we're going to test out a product by Drunk Elephant, and that is the Umbra Tint Physical Daily Defense Protection. So this product claims to be a sheer physical sunscreen that delivers powerful UV protection and helps aid in the prevention of free radical and oxidative damage as well as photo aging with a hint of tint for a gorgeous glowing finish. And it's suggested that you use it every morning, apply evenly onto your face, neck, and chest. It is a broad spectrum sunscreen and it has an SPF of 30. The active ingredient in this product is zinc oxide and it's 20% zinc oxide. I bought this product back in, I want to say April during Sephora's VIB sale. Um, the original price for the product is $36. I ended up paying like $31 for it and to be honest with you I only used it once and then I never used it again and you'll see why. FYI it is made in the US. As you can see the product is tinted. It's not like a white cream color. It sort of has like a brown tint to it and that's why I was really excited about it at first when I heard about it because I was thinking maybe that would help with the white cast but that wasn't necessarily the case for me but anyways you'll see well I'll, we'll try it on it does have a very creamy consistency okay all right let's put it on the face let's get oh 
closer here. You see, I don't know where that brown, that brown tint went. Like, no. I'm already looking like Casper. Okay, maybe this is too much. Hold on. I'm gonna wipe off the excess that I have on my hand and a little bit off my forehead because that may be a little bit too much. So I'm gonna rub the rest of this in the best that I can. And you guys, I am actually trying my best to blend this in. So, looking in my mirror over here to make sure that I got most of the streaks out. Okay. So it's blended in and this is what it looks like on. As you can see, it does have a cast. And to be honest with you, out of the four sunscreens that I have, this one probably produces the worst amount of cast on my skin, which sucks because it feels really great on the skin. I do like the consistency. I like the idea of it, but it just doesn't work for my skin tone. So, yeah, that's why I never used it again. <laughs> oh, there was a little bit left on my nose. <laughs> okay, on to the next one. Let me wipe this off. I'm using the fan to help it dry quicker. Now a little bit of moisturizer. And we're ready for number two. Now number two is a product from the brand called Etude House. And this was actually the product that the subscriber commented on and wanted more information about. And it's called Sunprise Mild Airy Finish. This is a Korean brand. This product is made in Korea. Um, when I first purchased it, I purchased it through Amazon because I didn't know where else I could purchase it. I paid $11.26 for that. Then when I repurchased it, yes, I did repurchase this, I went through a site called Yes Style instead, which I've mentioned multiple times in other videos on my channel. I love that site. And I purchased it there for $10.36. Prices do vary for some reason on those sites. Sometimes there's sales going on, etc., etc. And this physical sunscreen is the one that I have and have been using for the longest out of the four. I bought this the first bottle back in 2017. I'm not sure what the product claims are because I don't read Korean and it's all in Korean, but when it said airy finish, I just assumed that it, it's meant to have more of a matte finish. It does have an SPF of 50. Oh, and I forgot to mention, which you can probably could tell from the first product that I mentioned by Drunk Elephant, the Umbra Tint. The finish for that was, I wouldn't call it matte, but I wouldn't necessarily call it dewy. I didn't really notice a difference in terms of like my skin's like shininess. But anyways, moving back to this product, I'm going to put some out for you. As you can see, it's more watery in consistency compared to the first product that I tried on. Yeah, and it's very, very light. That's part of the reason why I like this particular sunblock. It's very, very light. Let's put some on my face. Looking in my mirror, sorry. I make sure that I've blended in all well. Okay. It's blended in. I do believe this particular sunblock is oily skin friendly. Like it does help mattify your skin. It has a nice finish to it. And as you can see, there is a slight cast to it, but it's not bad at all. Like I'm okay walking outside bare face with this particular sunblock on. The cast itself is very, very minimal. That's why this tends to be my go-to when it comes to physical sunscreens. What do you guys think? Oh, 
Okay, so the third product is by a brand called Kula. And I purchased it from Ulta over the summer. I had like a birthday coupon, so I ended up getting 20% off on this product. The original price is $36, but I ended up spending about $29 for this purchase. This is Kula's Mineral Sunscreen, the cucumber version, that has a matte finish. It is broad spectrum and it has an SPF of 30. Oh, I forgot to mention, all of these physical sunscreens do have an expiration date. As a matter of fact, all of my sunscreens right now that I'm showing you, there is an expiration date that's either stamped on it or embroidered in the seal. So they do expire after a while. So you wanna make sure you're staying on top of those expiration dates because they contain an active ingredient. In most cases, it's zinc oxide. And you do want your sunscreen to work if you're gonna be putting it on your face. <laughs> but anyways, this particular product, it claims to be a soft as a cloud, but with much better sun protection. That's kinda of cute. This award-winning matte formula is a favorite of beauty editors for its light as air application and farm to face sourced antioxidant rich base. Indulge your skin with natural ingredients including free radical fighting, vitamin C rich rose hip oil, omega 3 loaded evening primrose and flaxseed oils to soothe sun induced inflammation and phytoprotector plantain extract to restore moisture and rejuvenate skin. This product does say to shake well before using it. Same thing with the product from Etude House. There is, I believe there's a, you can probably hear it. I think there might be a little ball in there. You should shake it before you apply it to your skin. Now for the Kula product, it has two active ingredients. The first active ingredient is titanium dioxide, and this product is 3.2% titanium dioxide. And it also contains zinc oxide, and this product is 1.8% zinc oxide. The Kula product, it is white in color, which is what you would expect for any sort of physical sunscreen that's not tinted. It's creamier than the product by Etude House, but it's not as thick and creamy as the product by Drunk Elephant. So let's try it on. This product is made in the USA. And when um, I bought it and was using it, I did notice that it did provide a matte finish and the reason why I was I even bothered with this product was because I was looking to see if there was any other physical sunscreen options out there that would work with my skin tone you know just to see if there's anything else out there that I could easily obtain from like an Ulta or Sephora instead of having to order it online so then I came across this product in Ulta. Um, I'm just rubbing it in right now. And there you go. As you can see, the finish on this product isn't bad at all either. And it does provide a very nice matte finish. It doesn't feel greasy or oily at all. But this is it. I'm gonna show you guys up close. I personally don't think it's that bad. Like, I can go outside like this. The only issue that I had with the Kula product, which it didn't do it here, but I notice sometimes when I apply it, I really have to work hard to blend it in because it leaves streaks. I find it to be more streaky than the product by a tooth house, but once you blend it in, it's fine. And it also could be a matter of how much product you apply, but at the same time, you do need to apply enough product in order to get 
the coverage that you need in order to get the sun protection that you need. So you can't be like stingy with applying it just because you want to avoid the cast. If that's the case, then it's not gonna be able to do its job anyway. And the last product that I'm testing out was something that I actually purchased recently from Sephora during their, um, their like random VIB sale that they had towards the end of like August into the beginning of September. And it's a product that I've been wanting to try for a really long time now. It's something that I saw from YouTubers that I follow that they've mentioned it in their skincare routines, especially YouTubers of color. I wanted to give it a try, but um, I was just waiting. I was gonna wait until like the November VIB sale by Sephora in order to purchase it. But since they had this random sale prior to the November sale, I decided to just pick it up then instead. So I actually haven't tried this product yet. It literally just arrived like maybe a week ago and I just haven't gotten around to using it. This will be the first time. I guess it'll be kind of like a first impressions, y'all. But anyway, the product is by Dr. Dennis Gross, and it's the Daily Essentials Sheer Mineral Sunspray. It is broad spectrum and it has an SPF of 50. The active ingredient is zinc oxide and this product is 12% zinc oxide. It also says to shake well prior to use. You can probably hear there's a, there's a ball in there. Um, it doesn't have any product claims on it besides that it will provide antioxidant broad spectrum protection against sunburn but nothing else fancy is written on the bottle. So let's give it a shot. You're not supposed to spray it directly to your face, FYI. You're supposed to spray it into your hands and then rub it onto your face. It is white in color. Again, it has a watery consistency. I can tell compared to the other physical sunscreens, the other ones that are similar in consistency that this one is a bit more oilier it's not like a lot oilier or anything like that it's just slightly oilier there's even a bit of a shine to it but we'll see what it looks like on All right, so this is what it looks like on. It actually felt really nice going on. Like again, it felt kind of moisturizing. And to be honest with you, it looks pretty good. I think it depends on how oily your skin is, whether or not you would like this product. I personally don't find it to make my skin look oily. It doesn't feel oily or anything like that. I, if I were to describe it, I would say it looks a bit, it's a bit more dewier, but not like a crazy, crazy amount. Like it looks healthy and my skin feels really, really nice. And as a matter of fact, as it's drying, I feel like it's drying down a bit more matte too. So it could be one of those products that in the beginning when you put it on, you'll see some sheen. But then as it gets absorbed into your skin, as it dries, it becomes more matte. But as you can see, I don't look like a grease ball or anything like that. So I'm pretty happy about this particular product. Well, that's it, you guys. I'm actually really, really happy with the majority of my physical sunscreens that I've purchased. Um, the only one, like I said before, the only one that I have not used since trying it out once was the one by Drunk Elephant, the Umbra Tint. But all of the other three sunscreens, those three I feel like are 
great options for us with darker skin tone. If you're someone that has a complexion deeper than mine, I would recommend if you can still testing out the products in store if possible, um, just to see whether or not it's something that you can work with. But if you're someone whose complexion is similar to mine, I think these will work great. And I think for the three that I liked, I think they're fine for oily skin. I do think they're oily skin friendly, especially the Kula and the Etude House sunscreens. Those are, I definitely think those are oily skin friendly. They are definitely matte finish. Feel free to let me know in the comments down below if you've tried any of these products, what your experience was like, or if you're just interested in trying them out. And if you do, let me know how it goes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up and I'll be seeing you in my next upload. Bye.